Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm. So from here, I can see some tired face. <laughs> Probably you want to say, it is you. <laughs> so I also, I am one of the students. But so I'm really glad to stand here and God is sustaining me. So uh, I give thanks to lo the Lord. So the time flies so fast. It is week six. Can you believe it? So, and also it is already third year for me <laughs> to be here. And also it is five years since I experienced the earthquake in 2011. It was one of my turning point for me, uh, turning point. Anyway, uh, please open your pew Bible, page 767. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 through, f 1 through 7 and 14 to 20, 21. The Lord of God said Israel, their judgment through Isaiah. But not only that, uh, the Lord of God gave us the promise. So it was the promise, uh, that promise was three R, regathering, redemption, and regeneration. So through today's passage, the Lord of God Pro, uh, the, it revealed himself as the only Savior. So, shall we hear the words of God? But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy, wo Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Let's move on to chapter four, uh, verse 14 through 24. Verse 14. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I sent to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives. Even the Chaldeans in the ships in which, uh, in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are ex extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild bees will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. 
before we share the gospel. Uh, let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we praise your great name. Thank you for giving this beautiful day. And thank you for gathering us this place for sharing and worship, uh, sharing your words and uh, worshiping you. Father, thank you for sustaining us and strengthening us day by day. Thank you for g giving us the spiritual growth day by day. You are our light and you are our refuge. Father, now we share your words. Even if my mouth was small, your words is fruitful and gracious. Please use this mouth for sharing your gospel. And please open our hearts for receiving your good news. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. We are sharing the book of Isaiah this term. Prophet Isaiah ministered in the day of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Three, of, uh, three out of these four kings were described that he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. In the book of Second Chronicle, there were, through the Bible, we can see that there were strong tensions between them and the surrounding countries, such, uh, such as Assyria. As I said, today's scripture describes about three promises. Even though God's people lost their hope, they received these new promises. Today, we want to focus on the promise of regener regeneration. With <coughs> and uh, today, I want to focus on the verse 19. And the theme is, what is the new thing? Okay, I will read again, the verse 19. <coughs> Behold, I am do doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What is this new thing? And we will see with the perspective, three points, three topics. The hope under the hopeless, redemption by the Lord himself, and the new hope of regeneration. The first, we want to keep remind that, uh, keep reminding, uh, keep in our hearts that the Lord promised the redemption with Israel who lost their hope to be with him. Let's think about the case of King Isaiah and Hezekiah. Second Chronicle describes about them that he did right things in God's eyes. However, when we see the Bibles, both of, both of them suffered from the illness from God. According to Second Chronicle chapter 26, uh, verse uh, 23, you don't have to open it. Uzziah buried with the, his fathers in the burial field because of his illness. In other words, Hezekiah was not buried with the same place as his fathers. On the other hand, Hezekiah was buried in the same place as King David. Their lust of life was totally different when we, when we compare with their illness, while Uzziah's illness was God's anger, Hezekiah's sickness was trial from the, from the Lord. Hezekiah had an incurable sick at the end of his life. Isaiah told, Isaiah, uh, uh, Isaiah told Hezekiah that, Thus says the Lord, set your, horse, uh, set your house in order, for you shall die. You shall not recover. <coughs> this word is very severe, isn't it? How do you feel, brothers and sisters, if I told you that you're going to be die tomorrow? <laughs> so, 
Of course, I will not say it. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was said that from Isaiah, uh, Isaiah probably I will fell down into despair, as Hezekiah did. So it was so severe for Hezekiah. He despaired for his hope, uh, hopeless situation. He we and then he wept. However, then Hezekiah did not become desperate and lose a hope, even though he was in a hopeless situation. He pled with God to remember his achievement in his life. It was right. Uh, it was right in God's eyes to pray. Second Chronicle chapter thirty-two says that Hezekiah humbled, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Hezekiah. The Lord of God heard his prayer, and it was good thing in <coughs> God's eyes, even though. They were in a hopeless situation. King Hezekiah did not give up to pray, and uh, he prayed and uh, pled to God. And then we want to remember that God is hearing the prayer of us. On the other hand, how was Uzziah? Uzziah's last was contrast to Hezekiah. His illness was leper. Uh, leper. Is this cor correct pronunciation? Leper. Leprosy. Leprosy. Thank you so much. I learned the new vocabulary. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Leprosy. And according to Leviticus, it was a sign of being unclean. In other words, it was a sign of being separate from the Lord. Uzziah died with a sign, uh, this sign, and he was buried in the different place with his fathers. At first, Uzziah had set himself to seek God during he had an instructor. So at first, he walked on the way of the Lord. However, I don't know, excuse me, sorry. Uzziah reigned his nation in the fear of God at first. Then, God had made Uzziah to prosper. However, even though his prosperity was from God, Uzziah had an arrogance in his heart at the end of life. Second Chronicles tells us that he had no longer listened any advice. His heart was hardened. According to Second Chronicles chapter 26, he, intend, he it intended to exceed his authority as a king. God gave Hezekiah a... <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. Then leprosy broke out on his forehead. In other words, it was the brand of being separated from God. Also, this situation was hopeless for King Uzziah. On the other hand, God gave Hezekiah a hope, even though he was in a hopeless situation. The judgment for people, uh, judgment itself is severe for us. However, we should not forget that the Lord of God wants to redeem you. And God wants you to receive this new hope even if you are in hopeless situation. <clears throat> also, God's redemption is for our living, not for our dying. But loss, uh, when, I ex uh, when we experience loss, this loss usually makes us to fall down to despair. And despair usually causes us to die. Through the preparation for this preaching, I read one news 
about the victim of the earthquake. He lost his son in, the, in this disaster. He said that he was still in a grief of his uh, l- grief of the loss of his son. He, for him, the time has stopped since the, the earthquake. Then many Japanese lost many things. Sadly, many people suicide, suicided because of the grief and the loss of the hope in the future. Mm-hmm. More than that, sadly, before that, Japanese was famous for suicide. <laughs> I realized that when we lost our hope in the future and despaired, it caused us to die. In other words, hope is necessary for us for living today and the future. And uh, I realized that one thing, certain thing for us, God gave us today's promise of redemption to you. Brothers and sisters, please receive this new hope, even if you are in hopeless situation. I will. Uh, I want to. Uh, I want to receive this hope. Second thing, what I want, uh, what we want to remind thing is the redemption of the Lord itself. The Lord, the Lord of God, still keep calling. His people, even though they left from Him. Today's scripture passage began with saying, Fear not. The Lord urged His people who are in the situation of despair, Fear not. He, he also repeated twice, Fear not. He promised that, I have redeemed you. The original language used the perfect form, not imperfect. In other words, the Lord had already redeemed you, certainly. It is not uncertain, but God redeemed, uh, had redeemed you, have redeemed you. Through the example of King Hezekiah, we know that the Lord hears your prayer every time. Second Kings chapter twenty verse five said that Hezekiah, uh, Hezekiah pray, uh, Hezekiah's prayer was heard by the by the Lord of God. He heard his prayer and saw his tear. And the Lord of God told the prof- uh, prophet Isaiah that, "Behold, I will heal you." And Hezekiah was invited to the house of the Lord again. The Lord promised him to heal his illness, and also he invited to his house. Why? Because he loved him. In general, the despair caused us to think we are an inferior I heard that many young Japanese are suffered to thinking, I, am, I cannot understand about my price. Usually they say, I am worthless. However, the Lord of God said, you are precious in my eyes. Despair situation usually causes us unclear about our preciousness. And if you do not have a hope, probably it's also unclear. But the Lord revealed himself with anoki, first common singular phrase. I, I, I am your Lord. He revealed himself to these people. 
He is Creator, your Lord of God, and the only Savior. In other words, the Lord proved the assurance of our preciousness through the Word of God. The Lord said at Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4, that I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life, because the Lord loves you. The Lord himself is calling you. So receive this hope of redemption. Lastly, we will conclude with the saying verse 18 to 19. The Lord said us, remember, uh, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. We sometimes have a memory which you, which you do not want to remember because of shameful thing, or it is failure, grief, regret, and so on. Probably I am the solid of the memory of these things. <laughs> However, the Lord commands us to remember not. Instead of that, the Lord promised that, Now I am doing a new thing. And this new thing itself is Jesus Christ. Needless to say, excuse me, what Jesus Christ showed us in his life on this world. Needless to say, it was love of the Lord of God. As John chapter 3 verse 16 says, His love was not simple love, but sacrificial love. All of the gospel proved, uh, proved about uh, Peter's denying Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was arrested, Peter was questioned that certainly this man also was with him, Jesus Christ, for he too is a Galilean. Peter had been recognized as a head of disciple. He was a number number one followers of the Jesus of Jesus Christ. In other words, he was recognized as a leader among the disciple. However, he, the head of the disciples, denied his Lord. Three times, three times he denied. After that, Peter went out and wept bitterly. Then Peter lost everything which he experienced with Jesus Christ. Therefore, he went outside and wept, wept bitterly, bitterly. And his tear was tears of remorse. Sorry. However, when Jesus Christ resurrected three, uh, uh, after the three days, the ladies who, wa- who went to Jesus' tomb were told to go tell his disciples and Peter, uh, his, his disciple and Peter, that he is uh, that he is going before you to Galilee there you will see him interestingly it was distinguished as disciples and peter through my meditation i thought that it was not because peter was the head of disciple but christ knew peter's remorse how did uh, how did peter felt when he saw Jesus Christ again. While other disciples rejoiced his resurrection, probably Peter was still in remorse because of his denying Christ. As same as Peter, (coughs) excuse me, then, however, after they finished the breakfast, Jesus Christ asked, P- asked, asked Peter, Do you love me more than these? Jesus Christ asked Peter three times. As 
same as Peter denied Jesus Christ. Then Peter replied that, Yes, I love you. Then he was re- <coughs> then the new thing which Isaiah tells us through today's chapter has done for Peter. Then he was regenerated. He was renewed and became Christ's disciples again by Jesus Christ himself. Peter was regenerated by Jesus Christ. He received the real hope of regeneration when he was asked, do you love me? What, what does it mean to receive the hope of re- regeneration? Regeneration. John Calvin says that repentance is regeneration. The Lord called us to repent through the Bible. In other words, the Lord called us to regenerate from sin. Repentance is to turn back your heart to the Lord of God. Not means that stay in the grief. As John chapter 14, 14 verse 6 says, Christ is the way to the Lord. In other words, you are, go- uh, you are going to be renewed through Jesus Christ as a lover of the Lord of God. This is the new thing. The promise of God through Isaiah. Apostle Paul teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Brothers and sisters, it is true that the Lord of God gives us some difficulties in our days. But at the same time, it is true that the Lord has been kept to show his mercy to you. As I experienced that earthquake, the Lord of God showed his mercy through all of the brothers and sisters in Christ. The the brothers and sisters encouraged our nations The Lord of God himself told you that you are precious in my eyes and I love you in the past, in the future, and also now, today, not tomorrow. Receive this hope of regeneration through Jesus Christ. Because the love of the love of the God is already shown through these promises. Receive this hope of regeneration. Jesus Christ is asking you, do you love me? Receive this hope and please be regenerated through Jesus Christ. For Christ is with us and the Lord of God is being with us. Let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we praise your mercy name. Thank you for giving this day and this time for sharing your mercy and sharing your love. Thank you for revealing himself and thank you for showing your love through today's passage. Father, because of our sin, we usually forget your, uh, we, we cannot see your love directly sometimes. However, you had never given up us and you kept us, uh, you kept calling us through your words. Thank you, Father, for this new, uh, this hope. So thank you, Father, for giving us the new hope of regeneration through Jesus Christ. Please sustain us also today. 
day by day. We are grown up through your words. Please sustain us and give us the spiritual growth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.